my heart is tied. Hello and welcome to this extra special musicals with cheese. Uh, it might be Halloween related. Um, this is a bonus episode, and I'm joined as always by Andrew DeWolf. Hello, I'm I'm here. Uh, uh, yeah, for once, Andrew's here. Look at that. I'm here, and we're gonna have a great time this episode. This, this might is gonna be, be my the scariest episode. thing that we've ever covered on this show um i know nothing i'm walking into this with like very little glimpses and pieces of information so i don't know I'm... as much as some people do but okay. i've been i've been doing sporadic research into a very niche topic um and i think i have some insight well why don't you just lay it on us what are we talking about today andrew uh we're talking about uh the Rocket fire explosion, like you know, the band from the restaurant from the Five Nights yeah. at Freddy band. Basically, I mean, I think that this is what inspired the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, band more so than Chuck E. Cheese. This is showbiz pizza, right? This is showbiz pizza. Now, for you red letter media fans. So here's the interesting thing, and red letter media fans. I mean, there's a big overlap, I think, with uh, them and the entirety of the internet. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people know about them and their showbiz pizza bear experiences, right? Right. But here's the thing. That isn't the showbiz pizza bear. There is no showbiz pizza bear. It never existed. Okay. Now I'm very, you had me, now you've lost me. Elaborate on what you mean, what you're saying here. Okay. Let me start at the beginning here. A long okay. time ago, there was a 1980s tech bro. Okay. And this guy's name is Aaron Fletcher. All right. Okay. Aaron Fletcher started a company called Creative Engineering um, or something like that. Um, and this company partnered with the uh, Pizza Time restaurants or the Showbiz Pizza restaurants. I don't remember exactly what they're called. Um, and created the Rock of Fire Explosion, which featured characters like Duke the Dog Drummer, the Beach Bear guitarist, uh, Fats the Gorilla, who plays piano. <laughs> um, I think her name's like Mimsy or something, who who's like a cheerleader singer. And Billy Bob, the hillbilly bear that plays the shoebox guitar. And that is the showbiz pizza bear. Um, That's the showbiz pizza bear. His Billy name's Bob. Billy Bob. Now, here's the thing, though. He's not the showbiz pizza bear because showbiz pizza never owned the rights to the Rock of Fire explosion. <gasps> oh, what? Never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> twist on twist. Let's go. So Showbiz Pizza kept expanding and contracted this guy, Aaron Fletcher, to create more and more of the Showbiz like pizza animatronics, which is the Rock of Fire Explosion. And they put them into all of the restaurants, but the restaurants started losing money, like tanking. And so eventually they bought Chuck E. Cheese, including all the rights to the Chuck E. Cheese characters wait, wait, and all wait, of wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. So Showbiz gave up the rights to the Rock of Fire Explosion. So Chuck E. Cheese they was never a had entity. the entity. Chuck E. Okay. Cheese is a different ent entity. They existed simultaneously. And okay. Showbiz, the company, buys Chuck E. Cheese and gets the rights to those characters. So the reason why there's no more Rock of Fire Explosion in any of these restaurants and why it's all Chuck E. Cheese now is because they, were, they wanted um, Aaron Fletcher's company, Creative Engineering, to start repairing the old Chuck E. Cheese animatronics and to start putting those characters into all the shows because they didn't own the rights and eventually it got to the point where they went to him and said we want to buy the rights to your characters rock of fire explosion the rock of fire explosion because we prefer those because they i mean i'm just going to be real the Chuck E. cheese animatronics sucked ass and the rock of fire explosion animatronics were like pretty good quality like for the time okay okay so i i, I might need to have some clarity so okay this guy did not make the Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. No. Chuck e. Cheese. Who made those? I don't know who made those. I think those were just owned by the Chuck E. Cheese. And, and they weren't very good quality either. They were so like they were... torso up animatronics, whereas the Rock of Fire ones are full standing. Um, the Rock of Fire drummer actually plays the drum, plays the drums, quote unquote. He actually hits the bass pedal and the snare and sometimes the cymbals. Um, whereas so the Chuck E. This, Cheese was not doing anywhere close. This fella put the effort in to make the Rock of Fire Explosion a quality animatronic pizza band. For the time, yes. It whereas... may look, it may sound silly because you look at them and you think that they're scary as fuck, and they are. <laughs> 
but like, they were quality for the time. Let's compare it to other animatronic bands. Like, how does it compare to like um 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 the Country Bear Jamboree and stuff like so that? That's that's basically what they were going for. Like the Country Bear Jamboree is like the peak, like the pinnacle. Okay. And the rocket fire explosion, the reason they were so good is because they were like right behind. They were like close. Okay. So this man brilliantly kept the rights to the rocket fire explosion, meaning that Chuck E. Cheese cannot own the rights to those characters or those animatronics. And no. now he's refusing to like fix the rocket fire characters or he's refusing the to e. fix. Cheese. He doesn't want to fix the Chuck E. Cheese characters, okay. even though the company is asking him to do so. And now the company is going to him and they want to buy the rights to his characters or part ways, essentially. So uh, eventually it comes to that and he decides we're going to part ways instead of allowing you to own the rights to my Rocket Fire Explosion characters. Now, does he have a reason for this? Like, has he written? Is there like a press he, release statement? As far as I can tell, he is crazy. <laughs> 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 I mean, I I don't think I need to meet this the person guy invented this. the email. <laughs> Did he really? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we'll get to it. <laughs> we, there's overlap between rock fire explosion and email, and they're all made by the same crazy man. We have to get to it, and I'm not saying he's crazy to disparage him. I think he is earnest brilliant. and very brilliant but when you listen to him talk you're like oh my god <laughs> i don't want to interrupt but i i know the story's got a long play way to go but i need i i need clarification i need to understand i want to understand okay yeah that, no that's fine so yes the company goes to him and is like we're gonna buy the characters or we're gonna part ways and he's like okay we're gonna part ways so then all of the rocket fire explosions that are already in these restaurants get retrofitted and turned into Chuck E. Cheese bands. Um, so now all of those became Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. They took off the, the costumes, basically, and just put on Chuck E. Cheese characters. Um, and this guy keeps going and is trying to, like, sell the rocket fire explosion to new companies. And apparently he's successful because I guess he says he sold some to Saudi Arabia and Israel and small mom and pop entertainment centers in the United States. No, I can um, believe that last one. That last one sounds real to me. Yeah. And the, in the meantime, he's trying to figure out a way to communicate with all of these restaurants that have his <laughs> stuff because the, fo the phone calls are too difficult. So he invents For a man that I, calls, I'm betting this guy's not great with like social interaction to start with. So he invents something that he calls anti gravity freedom machines. That's what he calls it. I'm dead fucking serious. He calls it anti gravity freedom <laughs> machines. And he wants to sell them to all of these restaurants. And it's basically machines that are, e they do email. That's what they do. He invented, so without rocket fire explosion and a man's inability to have a proper phone call, we would not have emails today because he We invented... probably still would because here's the here's the best part. <laughs> okay. He couldn't sell any of the machines because like the year he invented it, the internet came out and they just gave email for free. <laughs> <laughs> so he came up with digital faxing. Yes. More or less. He came up with digital faxing. And basically couldn't sell the idea because the moment he invented it, it became obsolete. I will say, <laughs> if he like came out five years earlier, he might be a billionaire. I think you're absolutely right about that. Because the idea of digital faxing in like even the late 80s seemed pretty futuristic. Yeah. No, I mean, he had the idea and made it work, apparently. It just, it was too late and it, yeah. there was nothing to be done. But he hung on to Rock of Fire, though. So now... We're in the present day. We have Rocket Fire Explosion uh, on YouTube, which I am almost certain is run by the guy, is run by Aaron Fletcher. You're going, <clears throat> you're doing a real proper investigation here. Uh, well, okay. So you need to present evidence before you make a claim like this. And what is Rocket Fire on YouTube? The Rocket Fire Explosion is is just a YouTube channel, and they upload um, Rocket Fire Explosion performances um, and behind the scenes stuff. So, uh, and honestly, they, they're pretty active. They're, they've actually up uploaded within the last day of us recording this um and so they just post like videos of rocket fire playing requested pieces requested pieces and just older performances um and something that i figured out 
by watching it is um some of these rocket fire performances were pretty in depth that they had at these restaurants i remember chuck e cheese you would you'd watch chuck e cheese and they'd basically just strum randomly their mouths would move when they felt like yeah. it yeah rocket fire explosion has an entire abbey road medley where they play through 13 minutes of abbey road songs from the beatles re-performed by the band that's doing the voices for rocket fire and it's all done with the animatronics and everything in and sync with how the band would actually play it it's absolutely <clears throat> wild absolutely buck wild now and who's gonna put this much effort in for goofy youtube videos i'm sure they get like hundreds of thousands of views but I think it's the guy. I think it's Aaron Fletcher. I, I am almost certain. I haven't contacted the YouTube channel or anything to confirm, but I'm almost certain. And and you know what? I, I want to read... This is my favorite thing of the whole thing here. I want to read the description of the Beatles Abbey Road show tape for the Rock of Fire explosion from the official The Rock of Fire YouTube channel. Um, I'm ready. My body is ready, Andrew. This is the show I played for Michael Jackson when he came to visit me in 1984. He thought... Those were cute songs, and he asked me, who wrote those songs? When I teased him about not knowing these were Beatles songs, he seemed offended and didn't speak to me again that night. Gosh, I was only ribbing you, Michael. Not long after that, MJ bought the entire Beatles catalog of songs, and I think hearing and watching this performance had a significant influence on his decision. Now, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> there's a lot. The question is, how would this person have met Michael Jackson? <laughs> And let alone force Michael Jack. Like, was he? Th I have a couple theories. Okay. First theory, I'm following your initial pitch of it being the guy that created these, um, and trying to sell them. You know, um, in the post like '80s, like Chuck E. Cheeseification of showbiz pizza. And, and here's here's another point, really quick. <laughs> yeah. The Rock of Fire Explosion had Michael Jackson songs as covers that they performed in the in the restaurants. That also makes sense. But also at that point, I think Michael Jackson was building Neverland ranch and maybe wanted like pieces of them like at neverland mm -hmm. i think that is a reasonable pitch there's definitely something here is there any other wild descriptions of these videos or is it just usually like normal like here is a cover from rock of fire explosion of evanescence bring me to life which that does exist um you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> honestly i haven't gone through like all of them <clears throat> But like, is there anything <laughs> as wild as that? Wait, wait, hang on. Here's some insight, actually, from okay, Hips Don't okay. Lie by Shakira. Um, <laughs> it, this is this was uploaded in 2008, which is a long fucking time ago. But uh, here's the full thing. We are under attack from hackers. Please subscribe so I can notify you of new links if they destroy our work again. That's the first part. But here's the, here's the real insight. This production choreographed by Aaron Fletcher. Get your favorite song performed by the Rock of Fire Explosion. Go to HTTP uh, stars, the stars of dot com slash fans for details. Programming will be done by Aaron Fletcher, who created these characters in the system to program them 30 years ago. Or Chris Trash, a young up and coming animatronic choreographer prodigy. Mm, OK. All right. This, this wait, fella. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hang on a second. The, the rabbit hole is getting deep really fast. All right. All right. We're, this is live, live breaking news. Here's the link. OK, let's take a look at this. This is the last update in 2010. My fan bid idea was not financially successful enough to keep doing it. If anyone makes a bid on a song that is not already on the list, I'm returning that money to them. I still keep the list of songs up that were bid on so that in comma, in case I am ever able to start programming them, I will. But the bids never got high enough for me to make a choosing a song from the top of the list programming it on a regular basis possible. Even though I established a minimum bid to do the work, I had hoped and needed for the bids really got much higher. I'm reading word for word here. It's not my dyslexia. Um, <clears throat> if you have a band that would like to have its song rock -a fired and can afford reasonable rates to have the work done, please write me at Aaron at stars .com. And that's our Aaron, right? That's that's him, Aaron Fletcher. So yeah. this is conf this is ba I think this is confirmed. Aaron Fletcher runs the Rock of Fire. Are you YouTube saying? Channel. Uh, see, now I'm looking at it. Is it Aaron Fletcher or Aaron Fetcher? Oh shit! Is it Fetcher? It is Fetcher. I've just been reading it wrong. Yeah. Like, Sorry, well, everybody. Aaron I Fetcher. Mean, I, it's weird. Um. Oh god. That is my bad, Aaron Fetcher. I apologize. Um. We'll we'll get your name right for the rest of this. <laughs> Have you looked up his more recent projects? I 
can't say I have. Have you? In 2010, research began on an alternative cooking fuel derived from graphite and water called carbohydrilium, billed as a safer and less polluting than propane. On September 26, 2013, catastrophic failure of high-pressure carbon steel canisters led to an explosion at a creative engineering warehouse in Orlando. Investigation revealed that Richardson had experienced a similar explosion in 2001 while working at an earlier incarnation of products he called Aqualux. So, literally it exploded a bunch of showbiz pizza animatronics because it was in the warehouse because of this one crazy scientist. Not Fetcher, another guy. No, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, wild, wild stuff. He, yeah, he's a strange, strange feller. Um, is he still alive? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, confirmed Rockfire, that is him because I've now seen an interview with Aaron Fetcher and now I remember looking at him giving away um, the Rock of Fire fan page contest in 2021. Um, the winners of the character artwork contest. Um, the winners were Antioch Earl, the birthday bird and all that. So yeah, he's, he a hundred percent runs that company that, that YouTube page. Wait, did, I'm on this. I'm on their company's page right now. Their like website. Yeah. Engineeringcreative.com. They invented whack-a-mole. <laughs> what? <laughs> These people, what the hell? Oh my goodness. The man who made the whack-a-mole has one more chance. And the man comes off like he has to have some money, but he comes off like he has nothing to his name. You know, oh, I Andrew, there is, love it. A, there is a Q&A. <laughs> um, there's literally only two questions. Do you want to know what they are? What's that? Can I tour Creative Engineering and see the Rock Fire Explosion perform? So, yes, visit the store to purchase a tour or contact Aaron at starsof.com for tour information it costs three hundred dollars for three hour long tour <laughs> it includes a complete walk through the creative and engineering archives and rock of fire explosion performances um they are completely booked for the rest of 2015 we'll be scheduling tours for 2016 in december i don't think they update this consistently <laughs> I, I, I i don't know i feel like 2016 is going to be their year um, oh, I'm at their store right now. Let's see if they have any tours available. They upped it. It's four hundred dollars now, and it's coming soon, allegedly. Look, you know, inflation is crazy. You know, you got to make money out here. Um, yeah, the price. Oh, and that's so, Andrew. If we get two more, like three more people, um, four hundred dollars covers four people. That's actually not that bad a price now that I'm actually thinking about it. That's a reasonable price to see Rock Fire Explosion. And I wonder if Aaron Fetcher himself will give us a tour. I'd go. I think it would be a blast. I just don't want to go to Florida, though, which um, it seems like you have to. Yeah, which he seems like a man that goes to Florida. This is this is Florida man territory, I think. Well, the last thing, is there any, like, what drove you to him, in all sincerity? Um, So I just thought the Rock of Fire Explosion animatronics were terrifying. Um, and I liked watching them perform weird songs. And eventually I just, I was in too deep to not watch an interview with the creator for a half an hour. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is such a weird experience. Um, all right. I don't know what else to say, but Aaron Fetcher, come on the show. There's a musical you like. We'll talk about it. We could talk about rock fire Send us a, you have a Rock of Fire musical? Is that is that a is there a full Rock of Fire musical? <gasps> Rock experience? of Fire explosion, the stage show. I would pay big money to see. Sincerely, I think it'd be interesting. I think that there's something to that. Um, Billy Bob, the the bear man, kicking Chucky Chucky Cheese in the dick. Oh yeah. So just I want to just quickly mention a few other um Important highlights. Moments. Yeah. Um. There is the uh, Rock of Fire, like, reanimated or something like that. Rock of Fire Replay, that's what it's called. Um, and Rock of Fire Replay is, like, a 3D animated version of the characters that you're able to go in and animate. Um, and in recent years, there's been a lot of, um, like, creations of songs and things with the characters using that. Uh, I don't know who's behind the Rock of Fire uh, Replay concept. Um, and obviously it has been heavily hijacked by Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, yes. But there are actual Rock of Fire replay using the characters. Um, and I think it's interesting that people still give a shit about these characters that haven't really done anything since like the 90s, early 90s, maybe. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing 90s kids remember. 
and now it's become a meme thanks to Red Letter Media. That's true. The the Le Red Letter Media media meme, I think, has really shined a spotlight on on this in a very strange way because they don't they don't even address it properly, and and it still allows people to find it. So so Aaron Fetcher, you seem like a a boomer with a lot of money and if you want somewhere to invest it i'm currently holding a kickstarter <laughs> to make my first feature film and you know what <laughs> i will put whatever animatronic you want in the background of this film if you give me some of that money oh man i i want to see a full uh rock -a fire concert in your movie i i just <laughs> think that that would it would fit right in i feel like I mean, also, Andrew's <laughs> just released an EP with his band, Thanks. Um, I would love to see Rock of Fire's cover of Food Library. Well, apparently, we could get our music Rock of Fired if we um, send them money, uh, a, a reasonable price. I don't know what a reason. I like, don't know what a reasonable thing. price is, but if a reasonable price is reasonable, that would be a pretty sick music video. I mean, they have <laughs> to be reasonable, though. <laughs> Okay, Aaron Fetcher, invite us out to Florida. We'll discuss a reasonable price for Rock of Fire to play a uh, food library, and I will film it, and then it'll be really nice, and we'll all end up on the happy side. Andrew will get a music video. Contact us, Aaron Fetcher. I, You know what? Everyone, send this podcast episode to Aaron Fetcher. That doesn't creator, seem like a good idea. This seems like a bad idea. The creator of the email and Rock Fire Explosion. You and, know what? Just just send Aaron Fetcher some love, okay? I feel like he needs yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, tell him that <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese is for bitches and Rock Fire all the way. And, I and it's lit him. that's literally true. You don't even have to lie to say that. Chuck E. Cheese no. sucks. <laughs> And not even like, I, I've never been to a showbiz pizza, but the imagery of those characters are so much better. And the quality of the I, animatronics if you, is so much if better. If you want to see, because you probably are like, you guys are talking about Chuck E. Cheese animatronics, like it sucks. Look up, go to the, the Rock of Fire uh, YouTube channel and watch some of those. And then look up a Chuck E. Cheese performance and you will see the difference instantly. Chuck E. Cheese sucks. It blows. Even the modern ones don't even compete with what rock of fire was doing back in the I'm 80s i'm pretty sure the modern ones don't even like do anything anymore yeah they don't even they don't even try like that. i i thought like i'm looking at chuck e cheese i remember them being so much better when i was younger but nah honestly maybe you went to one of the ones that was a uh, actually a rock of fire band that was retrofitted with uh chuck e cheese outfits maybe it's possible. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try to find a specific one without giving too much away about where I live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, because the internet. Oh, my goodness. But I want to see, because I remember that I didn't get the half body. I got like full body boys. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. They're full body. They were full body. If they're full body, there's a decent chance that they were retrofitted. This 100% uh, just looks like a retrofitted one. And I'm going to send Andrew the link and he can see it. Um, but they look better than like the half, half-hearted half ones um, that exist everywhere else. All right, we're, we're seeing. I'm not saying it's good. <clears throat> yeah, this is um, this is certainly better. Better than some Chuck E. Cheese stuff, but this still it's doesn't not. even come close. Yeah. <clears throat> Either way, what what I recommend you do after you give Aaron Fetcher some love Fetcher. is you look you look up some Chuck E. Cheese fights. <laughs> um, look, <laughs> sincerely, I had many a good evening just watching people get into fights at Chuck E. Cheese on the internet, and that will also bring you joy. Uh, yeah. If you want to get fire into forever. Uh, if you want to get into Rock of Fire, I recommend the Abbey Road video. I think that that's a great launching point. And then you can just kind of work your way through the catalog. You follow it up with the Evan Evanescence video, obviously. The Evanescence one is good. Uh, Bring Me to Life is always a classic. And, and watching the cheerleader uh, sing that is, um, <laughs> it's a trip. And yes, they are terrifying, but it is October. Um, and it's okay to be scared. Mm -hmm. And on that note... We'll see you next time on Booze Calls with Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you never left my side and how you held me when I cried. You're why I'm living. And no, I'll never forget how you gave me the will to survive and look at us now.